Welcome to the Physics Classroom's video tutorial on vectors and projectiles. The topic of this video is the mathematics of projectile motion. And here's the two questions we wish to answer. What are the formulas that you use to solve projectile problems in physics? And what are some strategies that you can use to solve such problems? I'm Mr. H. Let's get started. I'm going to begin with a quick review of a previous video called Projectile Motion Characteristics. In that video, we learned that the horizontal and vertical motion of a projectile occur independently of one another and simultaneously. As such, whenever you mathematically analyze a projectile, you need two sets of formulas, one for the horizontal motion and one for the vertical motion. As far as the vertical motion goes, the acceleration is 9.8 meters per second per second, and it's a negative value. Horizontally, there is no acceleration. It's a constant velocity motion such that acceleration in the x direction is 0 meters per second per second. Here you see four kinematic equations which are used to analyze the motion of objects moving along straight lines, accelerating uniformly from an initial to a final state. In the equations, there are five variables. D stands for displacement, A for acceleration, T for time, and the V for velocity. There's two velocity values, V subscripted O for original velocity and V subscripted F for final velocity. Since these equations work for one dimensional motion, we're going to need two sets of them, one for the x motion and one for the y motion. To form the x equations out of these kinematic equations, we simply put a subscript x after every vector quantity in these equations. So instead of d, it's dx, meaning the displacement in the x direction. Instead of a, it's ax, as in acceleration in the x direction. We end up with these four kinematic equations. We can do the same thing for the y motion by placing a subscript y after every vector quantity, and we end up with these equations. Now what you'll notice in every equation is there are four quantities. So the idea of their use is that you need to look for three known values use for the three variables in order to solve for the fourth variable in that equation. Now when it comes for the x motion, what we know is that the ax value is zero, and we see ax in three of these formulas, so that term would cancel out. Matter of fact, the most common equation you'll use here is the top one, dx equal vox times t. Now for the y equations, we happen to know that ay is negative 9.8. So I can substitute that in for ay in each of the equations that shows up, and the formulas simplify to this form. It is important to recognize that our projectile equations have the variables vox and voy in them. What they don't have is the value vo. Oftentimes in physics problem, you'll get the value of the original velocity and the angle at which the projectile is launched. Your first step involves taking that original velocity and resolving it into x and y components. Doing so demands that you use trigonometric functions such as these. The vox is the original velocity times the cosine of theta, and the voy is the original velocity times the sine of theta. Here theta stands for the angle between the original velocity vector and the horizontal. Never, ever use a value of VO directly into the kinematic equation. First, resolve into x and y components and substitute the component values into your formulas. There are three basic types of projectile problems, and in the next three videos of this tutorial series, we'll devote a video to each type. The first type is what I call a horizontally launched projectile, when the original velocity is strictly horizontal. There's no VOY up or down, but just a VOX. Such problems, you typically have to relate the VOX value to the DY value and to the DX value. The second type of problem is what I call an angle launch projectile problem. In these types of problems, you're typically given the original velocity and the angle of launch, and you have to quickly use your trigonometric functions we just discussed to find VOX and VOY. Once done, you typically have to do four calculations. You have to calculate the time it takes the projectile to get up to the peak. You have to figure out the time up and down. You have to figure out how high the projectile is at its highest point. That's the dy at the midway through the trajectory position. And the last thing is you have to find the total horizontal displacement. And the third type of projectile problem is what I call an angled launch from an elevated position. It may be launched upward or downward. Either way, you're typically given the original velocity and the angle, and you have to calculate any number of things. These are for sure the hardest type of projectile problems. 
To effectively solve projectile problems, it's useful to have a very strong conceptual understanding of some ideas regarding velocity and acceleration. For instance, you need to know that the AX value for a projectile is zero, and it's helpful to know that the AY value for a projectile is negative 9.8, and to be able to use that value in an equation that has it. For instance, if you want to find the velocity at any given time, you'd use an equation like this with negative 9.8 substituted in for AY. The third thing you need to recognize is that the final Y velocity is equal to the initial y velocity. In fact, any time a projectile has two points at any given two different times in its trajectory, the velocity y word is the same at each of those points. The only difference is the direction. And then finally, you need to recognize that the highest point of the trajectory, the so-called peak, there's no y component of velocity. The vy at that point happens to be zero meters per second. There's a clear mathematical relationship between the original y velocity, the time it takes the projectile to reach its highest point, and the total time that it's in the air. And it's centered around this idea that at the peak of the trajectory, the y velocity is zero. We can use this fact and th this equation in order to derive an equation for the time it takes to get to the peak. We would just simply put zero in for VFY and say zero equal the original y velocity in the minus 9.8 times the time up. We could add 9.8 times t up to both sides and divide through by t in order to get the relationship the time up to the peak is equal to the original y velocity divided by 9.8. Now since the time to go up equals the time to come back down from the peak, the total time in the air is simply twice the time up. For angled launch projectiles, the time up refers to the time to travel through half of the trajectory, and the total time refers to the time to travel up to that highest point and back down to the original starting height. Knowing that the time up equal the V original Y divided by 9.8, we can calculate two important displacement values. The height at the highest point, which is what I call the dy at the peak position at the halfway time point, and the total horizontal displacement, that is the dx after the t has reached t total. To calculate the, the height at the highest point, I would use this equation. d equal V original Y plus V final Y divided by 2 multiplied by the time up. Now the V final Y at the highest point is 0 meters per second. So the equation simplifies to d, dy equal V original Y divided by 2 multiplied by the time up. To calculate the total horizontal displacement, I would use the only equation I ever use for that, and that's dx equal vox times t. But the t in this equation is the total time, so that equation becomes dx equal v original x times t total. I always like to end a video by helping you out by providing an action plan, a series of next steps for helping the learning stick. But before I help you out, could you help us out? Could you give us a like or subscribe to the channel or maybe leave a comment in the comment section below? Here's your action plan. Four things here, the links to which are in the description section of this video. The first one is the calculator pad, a series of problems that you can practice, you can check your answer, and you can get an audio guided solution if you need one. Then there are two concept builders, one for horizontally launched and one for angled launch projectiles. Great ways to follow up on this video. And finally, you can check out our tutorial section. We have an entire chapter devoted to projectile motion. Give it a try if you need to brush up on something. Whatever you do, I wish you the best of luck. I'm Mr. H, and thanks for watching.